What's going on, everyone? So Scream had a plan. And that was Sam Carpenter and Tara Carpenter, uh, and that being uh, Jenna Ortega, Melissa Barrera. The two of them were supposed to be the face and kind of moving forward of the Scream franchise. Now, I know that there was the um, supposed Scream 7 script that had um, Jenna Ortega, Tara die. Uh, part of that, I imagine, is just because the the trajectory of her career, if that even really was that the route that they would have went. Um, I mean, we've seen them do several rewrites since. Uh, on top of that, right, I think as long as Jenna Ortega wants to do the films, she's the biggest name, she's the biggest draw, you have her in the franchise as long as you can. But ultimately... Jen Ortega and Melissa Barrera are no longer part of the franchise. Um, I'm sure all of you are familiar and, and up to speed as to why. Uh, so don't really want to get into that. Kind of want to keep this uh, on the topic and point of uh, what this is about. And that is the sister dynamic, right? You had the Carpenter sisters and, you know, kind of going the route of, hey, here's two rather than, like, the one. Yes, Melissa Barrera was, like, the main focus, but you saw particularly in Six, it was more about the sister dynamic, the sister story, and I do believe that if they could have, they would have continued to kind of go down that trajectory. They would have continued to kind of build those two as the, the sisters, and very likely, you know, would have continued with the other two of the core four and the Meeks twins, but you saw a real family dynamic, right? And, and the sisters and then the twins, and... That seems to really be ready to translate uh, even beyond the Melissa and Jenna departing the Scream franchise. And we're starting with the new hire of Isabel May, who is uh, hired as Sydney's daughter. Now, we know that Sydney has at least three children, right? She has the one that she was pushing in the stroller. And then she has uh, what she related to Dewey, the girls at home that she needed to take to school. So technically, they could do whatever they want. They could have really as many kids as they want, right? Uh, I mean, obviously within reason, but, you know, she could technically have three, four, five kids if they really wanted to go there. Well, I don't think that they will. It's just something worth noting that, you know, they can kind of, because it was so open-ended, they can kind of manipulate it any direction that they want to go. And that's also something I've talked about with their age. Now, supposedly, uh, Isabel May is supposed to play uh, Tatum, who is the oldest daughter, and she is supposed to be 17 years old. Now, again, they could go an older daughter route if they wanted to. They could go a younger daughter route if they want to, um, outside of Isabel May being that 17-year-old, because if you kind of backtrack the dates, right, like Mark Kincaid and Sidney Prescott would have started their relationship around the year 2000, right? And we saw at the end of Scream 3, the two of them, together, not just by themselves, but, you know, getting ready to go watch a movie, and then you had the conclusion of Scream 3, and we didn't know in Scream 4 that she had kids, I know some people don't really like that they established the family dynamic, but it, it is justifiable, because in Scream 4, again, Sydney was on a book tour, like, you're not taking your husband and your kids all over to go do a book tour, right, so you can kind of justify it, and then when we saw Sydney, she was in Woodsboro with everyone she knows and loves and cares for. So, like, they all would have known about Mark and, and the kids and all that stuff. So, you know, it's not like they're just going to keep bringing it up every five seconds. So, again, is it the, the, the best kind of explanation? No, but it is something that it's not like, you know, the previous films established that she never had kids or any of that, right? It's always kind of been just open, and Scream 5 kind of used that as a moment to create the, the family dynamic again. So with that, you can essentially have a child as old as 24 if you really wanted to by the time Scream uh, 6 comes, or Scream 7 comes out, right? And so my guess, though, is that they'll do Isabel May, she'll be 17, and then I believe that they'll have another daughter that will be around, you know, probably 15 maybe, somewhere in that ballpark, Right. So you'll have like the the 
senior in high school and then you'll have like the freshman or sophomore in high school and kind of have that sister dynamic very similar to kind of Sam and Tara right and kind of go that direction because originally before Isabel May even uh was thought of right um you had uh McKenna Grace who was supposedly uh in negotiations to be brought on as Sydney's daughter now again it's very possible that both could end up being Sydney's daughter. Because again, we know that she has at least two daughters, right? At least two, because she said girls as in plural, which means, you know, more than one. So they could still go with Isabel May as well as McKenna Grace to kind of have these two sisters that are going to kind of lead the charge going forward and very likely be the face of the franchise going forward, right? And I do think that that is the most likely approach because of what they wanted to do with the Carpenter sisters, right? The plan was that to have Sam and Tara kind of be the face going forward. You got the two films. You were supposed to get, you know, at least another one. That obviously didn't work out. Those plans ended up falling through. And now you get to establish Sydney's children. And they get to take on the mantle. And they get to kind of be the face and front and center going forward. And so I do think it is very possible that... One, at least Isabel May, and then whoever the other daughter that they hire is, whether it is McKenna Grace or somebody else, uh, I do think that those two will be kind of the new faces going forward. Isabel May may end up being like the Sam character where she's kind of like the the main focus and the other sister is, is intertwined in the mix and, you know, another kind of big fixture. I mean, you look at it, even just like all the screen films, right? Like you had Sydney, who was the main focus, but you also had like Dewey and Gail, and they were, you know, front and center, and Gail in many ways, right? And I mean, she's the one that has been in every screen movie. So I do think you're going to get kind of that similar dynamic. And I do, and I, and look, I'm all for it and kind of sticking with the family dynamic too, because we have an opportunity here that we've never had in Scream, and that is a family being targeted by Ghostface and Sydney's family on top of that. So it's not just her, you know, trying to navigate Ghostface and survive. It's her trying to navigate Ghostface and survive, but also keeping her children and her husband all alive as well, right? So now there's there's raised stakes in that regard um, of her. Now, I don't think that they'll kill Sydney or her family, but... You know, I, I wouldn't be, you know, maybe like Mark Kincaid, would they do that? Would they go that far? I don't know. Um, but just to kind of have this family uh, being targeted uh, for attacks, like I do think that, that is something that, again, has the potential to be very exciting because we've never gotten that before in the Scream franchise in any capacity, right? I mean, it's always been very family oriented, right, from, you know, I mean, even the establishment in Scream 96 was, you know, uh, all stemmed from Maureen Prescott, her death, and then ultimately tying into, um, you know, Roman and, and him being the brother that ended up taking out, and then, you know, even Scream 2, it's the, the good old-fashioned revenge of Billy's da uh, uh, mother, and then you go into Scream 5, it's, you know, Billy's daughter, and then even Scream 4 was Sydney's, what, niece or whatever, right? Like, so, and Jill. So, there's always been family elements to it. However, um, you look at the kind of family dynamic as far as, like, a family being targeted, that is where I think that things kind of get very interesting. And you kind of can explore different elements and and have kind of different storylines and whatnot but again character development is everything right i mean even when you look at like sam and tara right like they did such a poor job in scream 5 of developing sam that people were not fans at all i mean the consensus was that it was bad and people really wanted jenna ortega to kind of be thrust the spotlight now part of that what i believe is just jenna ortega is more of a fan favorite than Melissa Barrera. And again, she was kind of really coming mainstream and, and becoming more popular. Um, but I also think that a lot of it was just the, the poor character development that we saw and the poor execution and just the writing and storytelling of Sam as a character. And I really hope that they do a better job with that going forward um, with Sydney's daughters. Because again, they, you're talking about a huge, huge 
um, opportunity here, right? Like it's, it's, you can't mess this up. I mean, this is huge, right? Like you're talking about Sydney Prescott and her children. Right? I mean, you're talking about the outside of Ghostface, the, the franchise that she built. Right? Like, so you have to make sure that however you approach this, however you go about it, you, you do this justice and you, you properly uh, give us characters that we can enjoy. Right, Because, again, they're more likely they're not going to be the face of the franchise moving forward. Right, As long as Nev is willing to do it, I'm sure that she'll be a part of it and be in it. But there is going to come more likely than not a, a point in time where, you know, Nev either just doesn't want to do it or, you know, they kind of want to go a different direction or whatever may end up happening, right? Like, there's a million th ways that they go about this. And so even if Sydney kind of just becomes in, in the background in a lot of ways, right? Like, you're still going to need characters and faces to kind of lead the charge. And Sydney's children being those characters and being those faces... I do think you, you need to make sure you're right on that. You need to make sure you're handling business. But I do think that they are going to kind of continue this like sisterhood, like the sister, you know, power going forward. And now Sydney's children, as opposed to the Carpenter sisters, Carpenter sisters, you know, they, they had their, you know, two films and now you're establishing, which supposedly they want to do a new trilogy centered around Sydney and her family. And I think that you could do that with, um, you know, the Prescott, kids, right? So all of that I think is going to be very interesting. We'll see how it goes, right? But anyway, as always, this is a discussion and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, do you think that like, no, like, you know, th they'll, they'll have it be, you know, just maybe focused on one or, you know, maybe the entire family and that'll be the story going forward. Do you like the idea of kind of going the sister route? Um, again, however you feel or whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it out of the way. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Let me enjoy these types of videos and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.